Hello, I'm Matthew Malcolm with Pacific Net Producer Magazine, reporting to you here today with Bob Beatty, UC Cooperative Extension Farm Advisor Emeritus, and also the uh, famous author of our monthly Orchard Tasks for for Pistachios. You do a great job of that in the Over industry. Over 25 years now. 25 years, yeah. So wanted to talk specifically about the alternate bearing nature of pistachios, especially the older varieties. You know, that, that fluctuation from year to year can can really you know, be a big deal. And in an industry where there's growing demand and growing uh, production, to try to get a little more consistency, especially for marketing purposes, wanted to talk about how we might be able to mitigate that, you know, at least on the older varieties. Sure, Matt. Well, we have uh, to first understand that we're dealing with a, a biblical tree, and it's been around for uh, thousands of years. And farmers and horticulturalists have to appreciate the fact that alternate bearing is somewhat, in, it is inherent genetically in the tree. However, just recently I conducted a six year trial where I compared the <clears throat> effects of reconstructing pruning, side hedging, and topping on a 23 year old uh, well cared for pistachio block at the Kearney Research Center. Uh, and included in that block were trees grown on Pistachia Atlantica, mm -hmm. Pistachia Integrima, also known as PG1, and then seedling PG2s, which is an interspecific hybrid. And I emphasize seedling because platinum is a selection of one Pioneer Gold 2 seedling. So I was studying a range of seedlings for Pioneer Gold II, mm -hmm. and then also UCB1 seedling trees, with the intention of determining whether or not rootstock might affect the alternate bearing character of a tree after it was side hedged and topped prior to either the on year or the off year. And that's all mechanically all done. All mechanically done. And to give the growers or the audience an idea as to how severe these treatments were, these trees were roughly 23 feet tall and had a full canopy at 19 feet. So I cut the trees on the side at six and a half feet and I topped as much as uh, eight feet off wow. the tops of these trees. I cut them down to uh, actually, I correct that six feet off the tops of the trees. Mm -hmm. I cut them uh, down to about 16 feet. And the severity of the topping was necessary in order to facilitate future hand tipping crews because they can only tip a tree so high and the yeah. tree is going to regrow. And uh, the other point that needs to be made clear is that uh, I only hedged one side of every other row prior to the on-year and then for the off-year treatment every other row. But then I came back and repeated the, the row that had not been hedged during the next on or off-year. So the treatments were imposed strictly on on or off-bearing years. Okay, so what did we learn? We learned that Atlantica rooted older trees that had severely, whose alternate bearing cycle had gone from 5,000 pounds to maybe um, 1,000 pounds in the off year, that they had a better response to mitigating alternate bearing with the severe hedging and topping than did the more vigorous rootstocks such as UCB1 and PG2. Uh, mm -hmm. um, we, we cut the alternate bearing index on Atlantica in half by pruning it severely prior to the off year. Again, you have to understand we sacrificed the off year crop, but over the six year period, that we studied the trees, the <clears throat> trees became half as alternate bearing 
when they were pruned severely prior to the off year on a weaker rootstock. And I believe that the Atlantica has a stronger alternate bearing index because it doesn't have the horsepower that the new interspecific hybrids such as UCB1 and um, PG2 have. Uh, Pistachia and Tegarima, also known as PG1, Pioneer Gold 1, it's, uh, it also was alternate bearing, but not as severely as Atlantica, again suggesting that there's a vigor correlation to within the rootstock to uh, the, the tendency to alternate bear. The, PG, uh, the, the UCB1s and the PG2s, which are quite vigorous, they showed no effect uh, relative to alternate bearing from severe side hedging prior to the on or the off year. So uh, Dr. Ferguson um, was excited to see this information because she suggested that it was some of the first information that she had seen that showed that rootstock did in fact have an effect on the scion of the tree, the pistachio scion, which has this inherent alternate bearing character but apparently can be accentuated by the degree of vigor that the rootstock imparts to the scion. Right. So, you know, for, for all this acreage coming into production today, uh, that's not on, on that particular rootstock, on some, some of the newer rootstocks, what uh, recommendations might you have for growers that are looking to get greater consistency in their yields? Uh, you said the, yeah. new, the newer varieties and rootstocks tend to not have as much alternate bearing issues to start with, but is there anything more they can do? Well, <clears throat> all the research that I've done, Matt, shows that uh, a, a hand pruned tree will always not only produce the highest crop, but also has the longest long, uh, longevity. longevity of a fruitful canopy. That said, I'm fully aware of the rising costs of labor and the difficulty in acquiring skilled labor to prune the increasing acreage that we have in the pistachio industry. So without doubt, we're going to see more and more mechanical pruning and topping of pistachio trees. And I would say that in the case of the more the stronger rootstocks, such as UCB1, or in this case now Platinum, which is PG2 clone, that those rootstocks should be less likely to alternate bear. However, the, the degree of vigor that they have is going to perhaps create a shading problem faster so in the life of the orchard. Mm -hmm. So growers will need to be paying attention to the expanding canopy and the nature of the canopy early in the life of the orchard so that they initiate mechanical pruning, should that be their desire, earlier than they would have with the less vigorous stocks. So the take-home lesson there is don't wait until the canopy gets so over overgrown that you're now going to go in and, and prune it so severely that you have exceeded the compensation capacity that we learned years ago from my early uh, pruning research that you've now exceeded the compensation capacity of the tree and taken a yield hit that might have been mitigated had you started your mechanical program a little earlier in the orchard's canopy life. Great. Well, thank you for that, that update. And, and as growers, you know, with all this acreage coming into production, definitely, and, and the, the market demand for pistachios, getting a consistent supply is going to be really important. So thank you for those updates. Read more about these things in Pacific Nut Producer Magazine. I'm Matthew Malcolm, CaliforniaAgNet.com. Happy farming.